Welcome back. We're taking a tour of the solar system in this, in this, uh, these le lectures, and right now we're going to look at the inner planets. And these are rocky planets, meaning that they're like Earth. Earth is a rocky planet. There's actually a planet to land on. There's some something that you could land on. You're going to see that the inner planets uh, tr uh, out from the sun are rocky planets and as you go further further out the planets are bigger than the inner planets but they are also lighter in fact most of them are not real there's no really ground it's more of a gas giant so there isn't necessarily a, a place you could land a ship uh, they they have different kinds of uh, liquidy gassy uh, different types of, of materials that make up these humongous planets. So this first lesson we're going to look at uh, the innermost planets, uh, we'll look at um, all the way through Mars, and then then in an, another lecture we'll look at the at the large uh, gas giants. So this first picture we have is of Mercury, uh, one of the later uh, probes have gone as far as Mercury to take some pictures. Uh, it's really hard to see Mercury from Earth because it's so close to the Sun. Every time you're looking at it, you're looking right into the Sun and that's just really bad for taking pictures. Uh, but some of the probes have, have really good uh, really good images. You can see that it's about the size of the Moon. Okay, so you have the Moon here on the left, you have Mercury here on the right. You see lots of similarities. It's, it's really, it's about the size of a Moon. It's smaller than three of the Moons of other planets uh, and just a touch bigger than, the, than our moon. It's full of crater marks. You can see the ejecta and the rays uh, that, that we looked at. It has a um, very, very short orbit and a really, really long day. So remember on Earth, we, are, we go around the axis every 24 hours. So there's a day-night sequence every 24 hours. Uh, Mercury takes almost 180 days, it takes like a school year for it to go around once, like one day night. And so for that reason, it's, um, there's some really, really differences in temperature. The sun side, the side towards the sun, can get up to 800 degrees in the daytime. That's, you know, it would melt things, like there wouldn't be anything, nothing could ever live there. And then on the, when it gets night, it can drop down to about 300 below zero. So it's ridiculous ch changes. Now there's no atmosphere in Mercury and so, so it doesn't reflect most of the light. It'll absorb most of the light. That's why it gets really, really hot in the daytime because it's absorbing that energy and then it radiates that energy uh, and gets really, really cold. So say the Earth would be, shine like a blue marble because it's the atmosphere that you're seeing and the light bounces off of an atmosphere planet, great. Um, it doesn't bounce as well off of something like Mercury and it was uh, even a long time before they discovered it. Venus, um, it's called here the veiled planet, it's because it has a, an, a, an atmosphere. Now the atmosphere isn't like our atmosphere, it's uh, almost 100% carbon dioxide and for that, and there's some methane too, you wouldn't want to to breathe uh, the gas that goes to your stove. But in any case, it's it's very, very thick atmosphere. And because it's so thick, it has extreme greenhouse effect. Now, I, it's possible that you've heard of the greenhouse effect, and we'll study it when we get to the Earth's atmosphere, but essentially it's like a blanket. If you were in the winter time and you were laying on the bed with no covers, then your body heat would simply radiate away from you and go out into the room and not come back. But if you have a blanket on, the, the heat comes from your body, hits the blanket, and then bounces back on your body and rewarms you. So you lose, you lose heat very slowly when you have a, when you have a, a cover on. Or it work, works the same as a thermos bottle where there, it doesn't allow the heat to dissipate out. So because it has such a thick greenhouse effect, this is like global warming to the max, um, it can be it can be ridiculously hot. Now, of course, it's close to the sun too, 450 Celsius. Okay, water boils at 100 Celsius, so very, very, very hot. 
and you've got acid hanging in the air too. So I don't know if it's a very habitable place. Uh, I wouldn't want a hotel there. I don't think anybody would come, but it, it is um, very easy to study and it, a lot of people have looked at this for centuries. It, it's called the morning star because it's so close to the sun that either it's the evening star where you see that planet right before it goes around the sun again and you see it in the evening or you see it in the morning because the sun has to be very close to it. So it's either you can see it right before the sun comes up or you can see it right after the sun goes down. So Venus can be the evening star or the morning star uh, because it, it shines like any planet would, okay? Um, composition wise, very similar to, to earth rocks. Um, doesn't have much of a, a magnetic field, but it has a zillion volcanoes, okay? So a thousand, more than a thousand volcanoes on a, on a very small uh, planet. It rotates very slowly, okay? So it's day and night. It takes 244 days for it to go around its axis once. So, you know, that means that, that it's like 120 days of sun, of, of daytime, and then 120 of night, and you're gonna have some extreme temperature changes. So here is uh, Venus, and you can see that there is some topography. You've got some mountains um, uh, and some lava flows, just lots and lots of volcanoes, and a really thick, poisonous, very uncomfortable, muggy atmosphere. Of course, we're studying Earth for the entire year, so we're not going to look at it right now. Mars is the next. It's called the red planet, and it looks red. And the reason it looks red is because there's iron oxide on its surface, which is essentially rust. If you were to have a rusty nail, it would be orange-brown for the same reason that Mars is orange-brown, because there is an oxide or a rust of iron on the surface. It's about half the diameter of the Earth, and it, it has a, a longer year. We have 365 days to go around the sun. This one goes around the sun at about 687. You're gonna see that the, long, the farther from the sun it goes, the longer the year. Okay, so um, Mercury would have a very, very fast year. As it goes further, further out, it takes longer and longer and longer, many, many years sometimes for these planets uh, in the extreme of our solar system to get around the sun because it's an enormous, uh, it, it's a lot of land to cover. There's no land, a lot of uh, distance to cover. It does have an atmosphere of sorts. It's just barely has an atmosphere. You almost think of it as not having one. It's about 1% of Earth's atmosphere. Um, carbon dioxide and then a little bit of nitrogen oxygen and water vapor it is possible people have thought that that Mars is is could be habitable if you if you built some kind of a, a place where where the gases could stay inside some kind of a, um, a biosphere or a bubble of some type that you could uh, do that because the temperature is not as varied uh, as, as crazy as say Mercury or Venus um, and not as habitable as Earth, of course, because there's nothing there that we know of, but, um, but it is close enough that it could be, with, with proper, uh, proper attention, uh, you could possibly have a, a colony there, and a lot of people want to do that. So Mars has been mapped also. You have some really, really huge, um, uh, lots of craters, of course, and then You've got very large mountains, uh, volcanic mountains. You've got um, the highlands, which are these other parts. And then these lava plains, these mare like the moon has. And uh, you, do have, um, you do have some, this Valles uh, Marin, oh, my Latin's terrible, Marineris, Marineris is, is a big canyon in Mars about the size of the United States. So if you were to measure the United States from one end of that canyon to another, it would be like a great a Grand Canyon that would be the size of our country. Pretty neat. So we saw in the last picture the large uh, Olympus Mons volcano, uh, ridiculously big, way bigger than anything on Earth. Um, there is wind because it does have an atmosphere. It has a, a weak atmosphere, but it does have wind. and. Um, you're going to see that at the poles, they have found liquid water, but it's in frozen 
well, it's not liquid, it's frozen water under the surface uh, within a meter of the surface. Um, so lots of, uh, lots of people were hoping to find things that would lead to uh, signs of life, of course, because as far life the way we would know it uh, needs water. We sent some little rovers, some really cute little robot uh, Tonka trucks to Mars and they went all over the place making measurements, taking samples and taking pictures everywhere. They were able to uh, to see these. On the left there is, is Olympus Mons, the humongous mountains, a volcanic mountain with a caldera at the top. You can see that there is these rills uh, which looks like gullies of water and that's what made people for centuries and centuries think that there was uh, Martians. Uh, people for hundreds of years have had stories about Martians because they look through their telescope and they see little what looks like river valleys or canals uh, and so they were hoping that there would be little green men. I like Marvin the Martian from, from Looney Tunes the best. You can see at the top lots of conglomerate rocks, breccias or the, the uh, sharpie, sharp rocks that are all glued together, and then you have the smooth rock breccias, uh, conglomerate type rocks there too. So that's a brief overview of the, of the first four planets, not counting Earth, and then we'll look later at some of the uh, gas giants.